vassals of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. In Dallas, Texas, three shots were fired at President Kennedy's motorcade in downtown Dallas. The first reports say that President Kennedy has been seriously wounded by this shooting. It is a big idea. A new world order. It was almost as if it were a planned implosion. It just pancaked. Either you are with us, or you are with the terrorists. believe a lot of gun owners would agree that AK-47s belong in the hands of soldiers, not in the hands of criminals. Guns will be taken and no one will be able to be armed. We have to take all the guns. For many of the police and guard troops, it is an uncomfortable job to do this in an American city. Is global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? As for me! The answer to 1984 is 1776. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. This is what we have in store for you for this January 1st, 2013 edition. Tonight, the top 10 events that prove Obama planned gun control way before the Sandy Hook tragedy. Then, black box spy systems on cars are set to be made mandatory. Plus, 20 dark predictions for 2013 with Mike Adams. All this and more tonight as we kick off 2013. And welcome back. Top story headline. Democrats crank up death panel talk following Obama win. Let's take a look. Salon.com posted an article by Matthew Iglesias, a blogger and Democratic operative. According to Iglesias, old folks are the key issue in the federal budget and their welfare accounts for the remarkable lack of apparent cost effectiveness of the American health care system. The problem begins with those who have crossed the 60 year old threshold. The article goes on to say in September, a top Democrat strategist, Stephen Ratner, said rationing under Obamacare is inevitable. We need death panels. Quote, we need death panels, he wrote for the New York Times. Well, maybe not death panels exactly, but unless we start allocating health care resources more prudently, he says that, you know, rationing will be inevitable. So there you go. They use the term death panels. These death panels that uh, at first didn't exist. We talked about them over there in uh in the UK with uh, guys like Paul Joseph Watson. Now his situation wasn't necessarily a death panel, but he went to the doctor and the doctor told him he wasn't sick when he was. They're trying to bring that here. So when you are sick, they're gonna say you're not sick. And when you go in there and you're healthy and you just need to go get a physical for a job, you know, say turn and cough, <laughs> then they're gonna throw a bunch of pills down your throat and tell you that you're sick and get you hooked for the rest of your life. So uh, yeah, death panels here in the US, that's your Obamacare at work. Next story, smoke detector camera video still not released to veterans family. Now, hold on, now let me, let me say this. We've told you about all kinds of cameras. We've had cameras up in stoplights and street lamps and all these other places. And at first they didn't exist and we were crazy and you know, we're a bunch of kooks and people think people are spying on us. Now they admit they're putting cameras in uh, veterans hospitals of all places. And if you wanna see the footage, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> Don't you? All right, uh, let, let's put, put, up, put up the article, please, sir. Thank you. Okay, officials at the James A. Haley VA Medical Center put a tiny camera hidden in a smoke detector in the room of a brain-damaged veteran without telling his family. But six months after the family of the veteran Joseph Carnegie first asked for a copy of the video recorded off that camera, Haley officials still have not turned anything over to them. A number of individuals must have must be redacted from the recording prior to release. Susan Winswell, a Haley spokesperson, 
said in a recent email, there are approximately 1,000 hours that must be reviewed frame by frame. The article goes on to say the daughter of the gentleman uh, is very frustrated that you know nobody has released this footage. And I'm very curious as to what uh, they have in 1,000 uh, hours of footage that they can't show. I mean, the family's asking for the footage. I'm pretty sure they're prepared to see his naked behind should that appear on the tape. But I guess there are some other things in this video they don't want people to see. We always hear about these stories about people in uh, nursing homes and such. And I guess this guy here's in a, in a VA medical center. But, you know, same type of medical care. People get abused. They are, they're robbed. Some cases raped and molested. So I, I can't say that's necessarily the case for this gentleman. But what's on this tape that you do not want this family to see? And why were you taping this guy to begin with? Next story. Top 10 events that prove Obama planned gun control long before the Newtown tragedy. Now, this is a special report from Aaron Dykes, and I'll throw to that in just one second. But I would like to point out a quote, a very familiar quote to our viewers. This from Rahm Emanuel. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. What I mean by that is it's an opportunity to do things that you cannot do before. You guys know that very well, and he was very serious about it. So right now, let's go to that special report from Aaron Dykes. It's an article I just published moments ago, top 10 events that prove Obama planned gun control long before the Newtown tragedy. Numerous events throughout President Obama's first term have been patently exploited to destroy the Second Amendment, quote, under the radar. Now, of course, you remember the statements from then Chief of uh, White House Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel, who said, never let a good crisis go to waste. Uh, there's a few variations. He also said, you never want a serious crisis to go to waste. Those are all on tape. And it's the classic Hegelian dialectic that if you cause the problem and provide the solution, you can move the country, the population towards any kind of controls you want. And the number one control that dictators and tyrants always want is gun control. Look at history. Governments have killed more people than any other unnatural cause of death, and they always do it with the disarmed population. That's called democide. You can look it up. It's an academic study. But I just wanted to go over 10 of the top examples that prove that the Newtown, Connecticut shooting massacre is not the reason we're seeing gun control. As tragic as it is to have little children shot down, that is not why we're seeing this stuff. The government could not move quickly enough to implement gun control just on the backs of that recent tragedy. They've been ramping this up throughout Obama's entire first term. I take you back to February of 2009 when Attorney General Eric Holder at the very beginning of Obama's first term openly announced that they were seeking a renewal of the assault weapons ban. The response to that was from White House Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel who told him STFU, that's an expletive term, telling him to be quiet and shut up on gun control. It was reported in ABC News by Jake Tapp they wanted to implement gun control slowly, incrementally, under the radar. They did not want an open call for gun control because they knew it would get the gun lobbies mounted up working against that action agenda. And indeed, that's been what's happening. Then, of course, we lead into Fast and Furious, the covert program the government uh, admittedly overtly staged in order to ship or uh, walk guns south of the border right into the hands of Mexican drug cartels. They admittedly put thousands of those guns into them just so they could demonize the Second Amendment and specifically so they could add new restrictions to the importation, exportation of guns and try to rein in, quote, uh, assault rifles or semi-automatic weapons. And of course, there, that's its whole own story, its own saga, its own scandal. But among other people, Attorney General Eric Holder was caught lying about what he knew and when. Uh, that all happened under congressional testimony. Uh, he claimed he only knew about it recently in the last few weeks during his May 3rd, 2011 testimony, yet it was proved through documents leaked through CBS News and others that he was briefed about it officially at least as early as July 2010. So that's another big gun control thing. Of course, there's a lot more to Fast and Furious, but we don't have time to get into it all. 
Then, tellingly, on January 6, 2011, very conspicuously, just two days before the Gabrielle Gifford shooting in Tucson, Arizona, we have the Reuters report expressing how the White House lamented that there were delays over their new ATF regulations that were going to rein in semi-automatic weapons and attempt to curb uh, the shipping of weapons south, again, tying into that Fast and Furious scandal. I've got a link to that Reuters report. Uh, people ought to save and archive that and talk about it. By July 2011, this led to new regulations in the four border states, that's California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. It required the more than 8,000 gun dealers in those states to report anyone, anyone buying more than two semiotic rifles, all while the government itself was giving those weapons directly to the drug cartels. How shameful is that? And they undoubtedly got those regulations put in place, not only on the backs of the whole Fast and Furious illegal weapon shipping scandal, but on the mass shootings in Tucson, though they were unrelated. Then, of course, on January 28th, two days after that report I referred to, there was the tragic shooting uh, by the alleged killer, the confessed killer, Jared Lee Loeffner, uh, of Representative Gabrielle Giffords. Uh, she didn't die, of course, but many others did. Others were injured. That, of course, was its own big scandal. And there's all kinds of unanswered questions uh, does the profile of this guy add up? Were reports of possible second shooters or of handlers? Was there anything to any of that? Regardless, the media directly exploited it, demanded gun control. Publications like USA Today published the article the day after. Debate on gun control heats up after Gifford's shooting. And you got to remember, it's always this quick response after these tragedies that's the giveaway. That's the tell in the poker game that they've been planning the response to these tragedies. Uh, and then you have have people like the Southern Poverty Law Center, the sheriff of Pima County there in Tucson, Clarence Dupnick. They tried to blame the radical right wing. They tried to blame the, uh, the violent rhetoric in the country and the political spheres and tried to tell people uh, that they had to tone down debate and be more bipartisan. Meanwhile, gun control advocates openly demanded Obama use the Tucson shooting for gun control, but he's smarter than that. He knows it has to be incremental. He knew it was not the time for overt moves. It just kind of did a generic uh, rally for re-election and, and mourning for the people who were killed and injured in that attack. That brings us to point number five of these top 10 ways in which the Obama administration has always been pushing for greater gun control. That comes in March of 2011 when he told the Brady Center, uh, Jim and Sarah Brady, in a private White House meeting that he was working under the radar. Quote, I just want to I just want you to know that we are working on it, gun control. We have to go through a few processes, but under the radar, that was of course reported in the Washington Post and other mainstream medias. That was what was reported, and you can see for yourself what the evidence was. Obama's been working under the radar. Then point six, how the ATF tried to ban the importation of most shotguns. They tried to ban shotguns that hold more than five shells. That's most shotguns, people. Uh, some of them only use three. And they tried to ban the importation of uh, weapons not used for, quote, sporting purposes. Uh, according to the NRA and Ammo Land and others, this was blocked through a congressional appropriations bill for fiscal year 2012 that banned any federal money going towards that purpose. But but it nonetheless shows their intention. Point number seven, the Trayvon Martin shooting. I don't have to remind you, I would imagine, how much they exploited that shooting, not only for gun control, but to push those uh, buttons with people along lines of racial division. We saw everybody line up. They showed the picture of the younger Trayvon Martin. Uh, everybody came to the table arguing for all kinds of things. You had groups like that new Black Panther Party demanding bloods in the street, uh, blood in the street, while the supposed neo-Nazi groups were all mounting up to march. And of course, you had the mainstream media once again saying, is this the turning point on gun control? Is this the point where the debate turns in our favor? Again and again, you see the pattern of the media lined up to exploit these shootings. And of course, Obama went on in his press conference to say Trayvon Martin looked like the son he had never had, really just pushing people's buttons and again, greasing the skids, not yet calling for outright gun control. Then of course, you had the Batman shooting on... Um, 
Well, that was in the summer of 2012. Everyone remembers that. I don't have to remind you how much they exploited that in the media. But again, it was this ramping up because 12 people were killed, 58 people were injured. He used, quote, assault weapons. How did this one guy get so many weapons in his arsenal? How did he get the body armor? How did he do these explosives in his apartment? Uh, really, a lot of those questions were never properly answered. Uh, the police frequencies reported other s shooting suspects. There's the reports that someone let him in through the back door and all kinds of other, other unanswered questions. But again, the media used it for one purpose to show how a lone nut uh, can really take over the country with a tragedy and how that somehow leads to gun control. And I go on to make the point that Obama, again, refused to pursue gun control. It's, it's like that scene in Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, where Caesar refuses the crown three times. No, I don't want to be emperor. No, thank you. I won't accept that title of emperor until he finally does, of course, when the public outcry is strong enough, when everybody's behind him for that purpose. That takes us to the debates. Remember the debates with Mitt Romney? Uh, Obama was already the, quote, gun salesman of the year that had been pointed out in the Washington Post, many other mainstream publications, because he spiked gun sales so much for people who were afraid he'd be reelected and restrict guns. Basically, everyone knew it was coming, but anyone who had any doubts and all those who were in denial could only look to the actual televised debates during the reelection campaign for Obama, where he said on TV, that he wanted to renew the assault weapons ban. And then he went on to talk about how we don't need military weapons on the streets of America and how really it wasn't just semi-automatic rifles. It was also these cheap handguns people were using in Chicago where they already have gun control, which is also, by the way, the murder capital of the world. And as short as our memories are, I know most of you in the audience haven't forgotten about Bob Costas, but the tragedy over Newtown, the shooting in Connecticut has been so tragic that I think a lot of people have already forgotten how much they tried to use the media to call for gun control since Obama's reelection, just after that tragic murder-suicide case with the NFL player uh, Jovan Belcher and how Bob Costas took his spot during halftime uh, on the Monday night or Sunday night, whichever it was, football program to repeat the writer Jason Whitlock's calls for gun control. He didn't apologize even after there was a major outcry. He went on to do other interviews and said things like, young men can't be trusted with guns and they always do something dangerous. Something bad always happens when young people have guns. All this has just been greasing the skids for this total media frenzy we're seeing right now. Just never forget that these calls for gun control, which are bolstered by this manufactured public support for Obama's new gun control restrictions have all been ramped up from these tragedies I just listed and many more. That's not even including coverage of the UN Small Arms Treaty and the many other ways they're trying to use regulations through the ATF and frankly other groups to kill the Second Amendment through a death by a thousand cuts. The Second Amendment is precious. It's part of our Bill of Rights that's enshrining the rights of the individual, the rights of the state, booing against the possible tyranny that comes to every government, holding back the federal government, not giving them total power. Those are the reasons we need to keep the Second Amendment. It has nothing to do with these terrible tragedies. Armed citizens will actually prevent most of those murders, and I linked to dozens of those cases as well. The NRA uh, admits that two million uh, crimes are prevented each year by guns. Gun Owners of America estimates 2.5 million. Even the Clinton Justice Department, who helped back the assault weapons ban, admit 1.5 million crimes are prevented every Every year by gun owners. I take you now to Alex's special presentation on this December 31st, 2012 on these dangerous, dangerous gun control moves. Let's not let it happen in 2013. And great reports always from Aaron. I mean, that it breaks it down. He goes all through the list. So, I mean, there are plenty of naysayers out there, but I mean, Aaron Dykes is pretty thorough in his investigation. So, Great report, Aaron. Next story. Black box or spy box? U.S. regulators want to make car data recorders mandatory. Mandatory. I like mandatory. That's <laughs> they're saying they want to record what happens in your car. Let's take a look at the article. 
U.S. regulators want to make event data recorders similar to black boxes used on planes mandatory on all cars produced from September 2014. The National Highway Transportation Safety Administration believes that EDRs will be installed on more than 95 percent of vehicles manufactured next year. Now, that ties into another article that we did. Now, let's give you the exact date here. May 24th. 2011, back when they said we're a bunch of kooks and whatever they call us, and the headline reads, Feds mandate black boxes on all new cars. The Feds will mandate next month that all new cars to, should be fitted with a black box according to news reports. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has been involved in the use of black boxes since their introductions in 2006. In other words, your car, like your smartphone, may soon become a surveillance device in this high-tech snooping society. So there we go. I mean, we, we tried to tell you that these things were going on, and at first they didn't exist, and now that they're here, people are going just for like, like who cares? I don't care. I, I have nothing to hide. I mean, what if they want to, you know, look on my naked grandpa or put black boxes in my car to record my conversations? And yes, I mean, uh, you know, there are people who drunk drive and, and drive reckless. But I mean, this is a, a blatant violation of your privacy. It, I mean, it, it, where's the line? This is my question to our viewers out there, something to think about in the first of the year, where is your line in the sand? It seems like they keep pushing more and more and people just keep moving their line in the sand back and back and back. People say, uh, like when we talk about the things like the kids in San Antonio with the RFID tags, people, their justification for the RFID tag is, well, they're spying on them on their phones anyway, so who cares? And then, uh, you know, Xbox and whatever else, they come out, yeah, they're, they're taking uh, videos of you playing with your, with your Kinect. And then Verizon says, we're going to spy on you through your cable box and all this other stuff. Next story. It's back. Texas and superhighway deal with Spain. Yes, it is back. You guys may remember the so-called uh, Texas Trans Corridor, Trans Texas Corridor, this giant sprawling highway with no regulation, privately owned, where they can run drugs, hookers, hookers filled with drugs or whatever else they wanted to do without pretty much any oversight. Uh, it didn't, it never really died. They just repackaged it as they often do and they're representing it to you now. So let's take a look at that article. Very quietly, Governor Rick Perry and the Texas Department of Transportation or TxDOT signed in October a comprehensive development agreement to construct a toll road redevelopment of Interstate I-35 north of downtown Fort Worth. TxDOT signed a 50-year deal with NET Mobility Partners Segments 3 LLC, a U.S.-based wholly owned subsidiary of Centra, the Spanish-owned construction company. TxDOT picked Centra in 2005 to build what some have called the NAFTA Superhighway. So once again, this is a big sprawling highway. You guys can look it up for yourself, NAFTA Superhighway or the Trans-Texas Corridor, whichever you may prefer. This giant sprawling hallway, excuse me, highway with really no oversight. They can do pretty much anything they want to do on it. It has an 85 uh, mile an hour speed limit. I'm not so much against that, but the lack of regulation on this thing is pretty ridiculous. Now, this is an official story, but you guys may remember, it wasn't, was about two weeks ago now, we started the uh, Pierce Morgan petition, and we are very happy to report this thing. It's now over 100,000 signatures, 100,661 signatures, and we still have, what, a month to go? Scroll, scroll back down again. No, up, up, let me see. Okay, so we still have till January 20th, and Mr. Morgan has gone on to say that if we continue with our gun laws the way they are, we won't have to deport him because he will, uh, I guess, quote, deport himself. Uh, I think that should be our next contest. Go over and help Pierce Morgan pack his bags. I, I, think, <laughs> I think we should announce that new contest. And speaking of contests, we haven't forgotten about the Bob Costas and also the drone mob contest. If it was up to me, we would announce that stuff on Friday, but there is, you know, an order to doing things. So we haven't forgotten. We're going to announce those soon. So stay tuned for more on that. And that brings us now to our quote of the day. This from George Washington. Let's take a look. A free people ought not only be armed and disciplined, but they should also have sufficient arms and ammunition to maintain a status of independence from any who might attempt to abuse them, which include their own government. 
George Washington. So there you go. This this for all the people who say uh, the Second Amendment is just for duck hunting or you know whatever else shooting at the range. Uh, no, you don't. A gun at the range isn't going to help you when somebody breaks into your house or you know concealed carry things and things like that. And people keep talking about this. Uh, this latest guy, the Sandy Hook guy, uh, excuse me, not the latest guy. We've had stuff go on in San Antonio and other places since then that the mainstream media has completely ignored. But anyway, this latest guy, or say it again, the guy at Sandy Hook, you guys know who I'm talking about. They said he didn't even take his uh, Bushmaster AR-15, if that was even the gun he had, into the school. They said he left it in his car. So there's this big campaign to ban a weapon that he, uh, I guess he had, uh, I guess he stole it from his mom, but didn't even get used in the shooting. And there's other things like people asking the question, if the guy did go into the school, where is the surveillance footage at? And people say like, well, we can't show that footage because uh, it's disrespectful to the children. You don't have to show any of the kids getting shot. You can show the guy walking into the door. I mean, it's a school building. They should have plenty of footage of this lone gunman running through the school and uh, you know, firing his weapon, weapons or whatever the case may be. But anyway, back to the point, you need your guns, you need your ammunition. And why do you need more than 10 rounds in a magazine? Because a well-regulated militia needs more than 10 rounds in their magazines to fight, including those people who may be in their own government. I'm not saying be anti-government. I'm not saying shoot cops or whoever else. Um, George Washington knew back then that you may need your firearms to protect yourself. And they knew what they were doing back then. So quit trying to change the Second Amendment. And that's it for this segment. Stay tuned. We'll have another segment with a video that Rob Dew did a little bit back. It's titled, Troops Ordered to Kill All Americans Who Do Not Turn in Guns. You guys can find that on YouTube, but we'll also air it here as well. And the title speaks for itself, so definitely stay tuned for that. And also, if you want to support this broadcast, stop by PrisonPlanet.tv. Get yourself a membership. We have a 15-day free trial. You guys can see the new site. It's cleaner. It's sleeker. It's better organized. So go on there. Share the password with your family and friends. You can share one password with up to 10 people. You can see the Diane Feinstein action figure right there. And if you guys watched uh, last night's episode, Alex said he was going to interview the action figure. Of, uh, various scheduling delays happen. So hopefully that'll come out soon. It's not going to be on tonight, but definitely look for that in the near future. And also check out the InfoWars shop where you can get the new InfoWars magazine. There it is right there. 2013, the year America dies, question mark. So we still have time to turn this thing around on all fronts, on the, uh, on the fiscal cliff, on the guns, on the whatever, on the health care, on the GMO. We still have time to turn things around, but you have to get politically active. You have to get off the couch. You have to talk to people because I see these people in these comments and they say, uh, InfoWars are out there selling magazines and, and writing petitions. They need, a, they need to do this stuff to get ready for when the collapse happens. Okay, let me, let me share something with you. Uh, master prepper, and I, you know I, I got some stuff in my house too, so I'm not down in preppers. But you, I, I see these guys. They're saying, "Yeah, I'm gonna sit around with my with my MREs and my bullets, and if somebody tries to come and take me away to the FEMA camp, I'm gonna shoot them." I got, I got some news for you, sir. If you're not bold enough to talk to somebody about real political issues, you're not gonna be bold enough to shoot somebody who comes to your house to drag you off, especially if they're armed too. Just keep that in your mind. We don't want that scenario to happen. So do everything you can now in the information war so it doesn't spill over to a physical war. But that's it. I'm ranting and rambling. So stay tuned for this next segment with Rob Dew. And now, a special Christmas message from the Federal Reserve. This Christmas, the Federal Reserve would like to wish all of our slaves a very merry quantitative easing four. Our current chair, Ben Bernanke, has perfected the art of giving money to foreign banks for many years, as seen in this rare home movie. Ben is currently giving these banks 85 billion per month. Excellent work, Ben. Once again, this is the Federal Reserve wishing you and yours a very merry quantitative easing four, and we hope to destroy your economy in the new year. I really enjoy it when the globalists try to poison us and, uh, well, we resist them via a free market system. 
Hello, my fellow Info Warriors. Alex Jones here, introducing you to the Pro Pure family of gravity fed filters. Now, you know that the globalists are filling our water with radioactive isotopes, fluoride, lead, mercury, arsenic and one of the few systems that can efficiently and economically remove or reduce down to non-detectable levels, these poisons are gravity-fed filters. And ProPure is the top of the line. Their filters are impregnated with silver, a natural antibiotic, on top of that, they're bigger, so they filter faster. You don't have to prime these the first time you use them. It's amazing. Go to InfoWars.com and click on the shopping cart link uh, to see the entire family of these babies. Now, the fluoride they add to our water is so tiny that most filters can't cut it out. But ProPure has their system that will, again, reduce it to non-detectable levels, almost get all of it out of there. That's also available. And if you look at the different systems they offer, the Pro Pure big brush finish is on a stand. So it's easier on a table or at your restaurant or wherever you have it to go up with a glass or a mug and fill it up. Then there's this big baby right here, the Pro Pure King large version. Got a lot of different options that come with it. Also, they have the Pro Pure Big, probably one of the best values out there. And of course, it's burnished stainless steel. And then what I use on my RV, something that's great for your hunting cabin or the back porch is the Pro Pure Traveler. Small and portable, but packs a huge punch, cleans out all that garbage. They also have a glass sight spigot, so you don't have to take the top off and look in the bottom area to see how much water. You can see how fast it's filtering with this optional uh, system. The globalists obviously are hitting us through our water. It's time to take control of our lives. It's time to not give our children and families these poisons. And these systems cut it down to non-detectable levels across the board. ProPure is the name. I only promote what I believe in. And I use ProPure in my home and my office. And I recommend that you check out the information on ProPure at InfoWars.com. We already have the lowest price at InfoWars.com on the ProPure gravity filter system. But when you add in the 10% off when InfoWarriors use the product code WATER at InfoWars.com, nobody can top it. So again, it's a win-win-win. Stop drinking the poison water. Uh, checkmate the globalists when it comes to your health and support InfoWars.com and the work we're doing here. You know, many revolutionaries rob banks and things and kidnap people for funds. We promote in the free market the products we use that are about preparedness. That's how we fund this revolution against the New World Order in our move to restore our constitutional republic and a spirit of 1776 worldwide. Check it out at InfoWars.com. Pro Pure, top of the line, number one, most powerful and effective and economical gravity fed water system in the world. Pro Pure, available, discounted at InfoWars.com. Don't forget product code WATER to save 10%. It's the latest generation, years in development. Pro Pure is the name. And welcome back. Now, in our last segment, we intro the uh, the piece by Rob Du that we're about to air right now, titled "Troops Ordered to Turn in." Excuse me, troops ordered to kill Americans who do not turn in their guns. You guys can see this on YouTube. It's the pride of the info war with well over one million hits. Rob Du, I asked Rob Du, how did you get so many hits? He said, "I did what Alex told me to do." So maybe Alex knows a thing or two after all. Yeah, there you guys can see it right there. Well over one million, and I'm sure to get a few hits today. So let's check out by this check out this piece by uh, Rob Dew. 
Last week, Aaron Dykes covered how the UN has been incrementally trying to dig into our Second Amendment. Well, guess what? It's hitting home now because we just released a, a story today titled UN Gun Grab Follows State Department Plan. This is going to get scary. The UN Arms Trade Treaty that has been identified by observers as a flagrant threat to the Second Amendment in which Barack Obama is determined to sign has its roots in a 1961, you hear that, 1961 State Department Mem Memorandum which explains how the United Nations will oversee complete disarmament of all the people under the ruse of preventing war. Are you hearing me? That's what they're talking about. They're going to take your guns under the ruse of preventing war. Let's go to that document and we'll come back to this in one second. Here's the document. What's, it's entitled Freedom from War, State Department Publication 7277, released September 1961. Okay? September 1961 is when they started writing this. And you know what it says here? The United States Program for General and Complete Disarmament in a Peaceful World. Yeah, the only ones that are going to have guns are the United Nations soldiers. And guess what? There's not going to be any peace with them. They're going to be kicking your heads in and shooting everybody in sight. And they've already done it. It's happened time and time again. You can look in Africa. You can look in East Asia. That's what they plan on doing. That's their version of peacekeeping. First, there must be immediate disarmament action. And this is written by our State Department. A goal of general and complete disarmament. Second, all disarmament obligations must be subject to effective international controls. You know what that means? No Second Amendment. The manufacture of armaments would be prohibited except for those agreed types and quantities to be used by the UN Peace Force and those required to maintain internal order. All other armaments would be destroyed or converted to peaceful purposes. This all sounds beautiful and glowing in your new world order, but you know what it's going to be? It's going to be used to come in and take your wealth, take your property, take everything you have. And they're going to start by taking your guns. Let's get a shot of this. People aren't going to believe it until they see it. Here it is right here. This is their appendix. A Declaration on Disarmament. The United States Program for General and Complete Disarmament in a Peaceful World. A world where adjustment to change takes place in accordance with the principles of the United Nations, which means nobody has guns and everybody listens to the United Nations, a world where we shall be a permanent state of general and complete disarmament under effective international control, and where the resources of nations shall be devoted to man's material, cultural, and spiritual advance, set forth as the objectives under a program of general and complete disarmament in a peaceful world. So what does all that mean? Well, that means they're going to take your guns, and once they take your guns, you're not going to have any type of freedom of speech, you're not going to have any type of freedom of the press. You're not going to have anything. You can go read it all on Infowars.com. Uh, they link to a Forbes article under here. It's the UN Arms Treaty has caused so much controversy because it outlines a plan to target all types of conventional weapons, notably small arms and light weapons, according to Forbes' Larry Bell. There's the Forbes article. So even Forbes is saying they're coming after your Second Amendment. They're talking about your small guns. You're talking, they're talking about the guns that can be used in a guerrilla war against the United Nations when they come to invade and send troops from other countries here to take your guns. That's what it's talking about. But you know what? You don't believe me, do you? You're still in denial, aren't you? Those who are out there in denial. Well, let's go to a clip. It's going to start off with the New Orleans chief of police during Katrina saying, no one will be allowed to have guns. All weapons will be taken. And then it's going to go to today's show where Mike Adams got a call from someone who was actually in Katrina with the 40, 45th Infantry Brigade, I'm sorry I'm flustered because this information is really disturbing me right now. He was there confiscating guns. They were going door to door. They were kicking in as they asked, do you need any assistance? Boom. Do you have any guns? We're taking them. You said guns, guns will be taken. No one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. Today in New Orleans, they got a lot tougher on the holdouts. Police Department and not only the flooded areas, but New Orleans' driest and wealthiest neighborhoods, too. Police department! The police and National Guard going street by street, house to house. Sometimes entering open houses with guns drawn and instructions to disarm anyone inside. Um, I was with the 45th Infantry Brigade and Delta Company 1st at the 279 uh, 2nd Platoon. I don't, it's just, I've always wanted to get a hold of you guys and kind of get the word out there for those that still have that slight hesitation in the back of their head. 
that gun confiscation can't and won't happen here. It already has. And I was only 21 years old, just really gung-ho, really dedicated to the Army, especially to the infantry. And uh, I did whatever I was told. And what, what did they ask you to do? Oh, I... First, let's see. The first thing we did was we got a, a three-week uh, a book full of three-week-old 911 phone calls, right? And then we had to go around and answering all the phone calls. So we were like cadaver dogs for about three weeks. And in between them, we would run night missions. And here's the thing. A lot of people may think that they'll see this on the news or they'll have time to, to get ready when, you know, when, the, when the crap hits the fan or whatever. It's just, it, it's a truck, you know what I mean? It's a group of trucks. They pull up, they stack right on your home, as we did, and we broke entry. Yeah, we would yell out, Oklahoma Army National Guard, is anybody in need of assistance? But that's as we were booting in the door. But wait a minute, it sounds like you weren't part of the Oklahoma National Guard. I mean, you were, you were U.S. military. Yeah, I was, uh, I was activated, um, I think about a week after Katrina. I was, I was watching it on, on, on the news, and Sher Kamiko of Fox 23 told me before my unit even got a hold of me that I was going to New Orleans. So wow. We, so so uh, when yeah, we, got, we got sent in, and we were, we were the very, very first boots on the ground. Alpha Company. And you were, uh, confiscating, you were confiscating firearms? Left and right, yes. That happened today in this wealthy neighborhood where homeowners had armed themselves to protect their mansions. <laughs> Residents were handcuffed on the ground. In the end, police took their weapons but let them stay in their homes. They were a little bit threatened because our weapons were bigger than their weapons. Chris Montgomery says he'd rather be in Iraq than patrolling American neighborhoods. Walking up and down these streets, you don't you don't want to think about the stuff that you're gonna have to do. Somebody pops around the corner. I mean shoot an American. Yeah. Did anybody resist? Did anybody ever shoot back? What, what happened? Well, we had uh, we had a couple of people uh, resist verbally, and they got stuffed and cuffed very violently. Uh, we throw them in the back of the uh, the five ton or the deuce and a half or whatever, and then we take them out to uh, the Greyhound bus station, which was the police station at the time. But how how did you and your team justify to yourselves and each other that gun confiscation would help this situation when it was a free for all? I mean, isn't that yeah. a time when citizens need to be able to defend themselves? It never, you know, like I said, I was just ignorant as hell. And that's kind of something that I worry about with the, with the kids today, you know, if they really realize what they're doing. You know, I, I had no idea. The only time it ever occurred to me that something may be wrong is we came up, uh, we were down by uh, the old French district. We came up to this man's house. He had a big wooden sign that says, I'm here alone uh, with my dog and my shotgun. Looters beware. We thought, you know, it's funny. Everyone stopped and took pictures of the sign. But eventually we took his guns. Jeez. And we left him there with nothing. I, you know, um, so now that you know what you know, now that you're 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 listening to the Alex Jones show and you're you're informed, what would you advise people to do if this happens again? What do you do when they stack right? You know what I mean? And, yeah. And they're prepped to come into the home. There's no, there's no negotiating with us. Trust me, there was no negotiating. Yeah. You, if you resisted, you died. That were the orders. You go after Gunner, you die. It was traumatic. All of a sudden, they were banging on the front door, the side door, and the back door, and they said, let us in. I'm saying, look at all my food. I got plenty of food. They kept pushing me back, pushing me back, and ended up like this. Then, Patty showed them a small revolver she was carefully holding in the palm of her hand. A camera crew was there to capture what unfolded next. I said, it's not even loaded, and I dropped it on the floor. Well, they punched me in the face. Look at my black and blue marks. Look at. You said guns, guns will be taken. Yeah, no one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. So if you're still doubting, there's the proof there. They went into New Orleans. They went into the high and dry areas. They went in just to grab guns because that's what they were training to do. It wasn't about helping people. It was about taking people's guns to see if they could get away with it under a crisis. And that's how it's going to happen. It's going to happen in the dead of night. Did you hear the soldier talking? He said, we pulled up at night and we just busted in and grabbed guns. That's how they do it. They're not going to be, hey, please turn in your guns. No, it's going to be right down to the wire. And you're not even going to know that they're going to be there until they're on top of you while you're sleeping in your bed. So you better start making a plan. You better start having firearms. You better start learning how to shoot. You better start getting ammo. Because if you don't exercise the Second Amendment, it will be taken from you.
All right, great video by Rob Dew. Now, before I just saw that for the first time right now, before I saw that, I thought Mike, excuse me, uh, Rob's best video of the year was the Obama orders children murdered. Of course, that was the piece we ran about drone strikes. I, I still think that's very powerful, but this uh, piece from Rob is very good as well. So stick around after this break. We'll be back with Mike Adams as he breaks down his top 20 dark predictions for the year 2013. Stay tuned. And now, a special Christmas message from the Federal Reserve. This Christmas, the Federal Reserve would like to wish all of our slaves a very merry quantitative easing four. Our current chair, Ben Bernanke, has perfected the art of giving money to foreign banks for many years, as seen in this rare home movie. Ben is currently giving these banks 85 billion per month. Excellent work, Ben. Once again, this is the Federal Reserve wishing you and yours a very merry quantitative easing four, and we hope to destroy your economy in the new year. Alex Jones here with a message that could revolutionize health in this country. Going back about a year and a half ago, I began to learn about the incredible health effects of Longevity products. Aaron Dykes lost 92 pounds. We're going to show you some before and afters. Aaron, break down what happened, your story. I've worked really hard with diet and exercise to try to lose weight, but I just didn't get the results. It just didn't happen. Then I saw what you were doing with InfoWarsTeam.com. I wasn't even trying to lose weight, but I got it because I wanted to feel better energy. I wanted that nutrition. Didn't even understand how that could kickstart my own weight loss goals, but the products did that for me. I found myself suddenly losing weight, more energetic, wanting to exercise, wanting to eat the right foods. And they don't even advertise it as weight loss. I want to challenge our radio listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com. Sign up as a distributor and get wholesale pricing discounts at InfoWarsTeam.com. Welcome back to our last segment of the night. We have Mike Adams as he breaks down his top 20 dark predictions for the year 2013. So take it away, Mike. Hi, this is Mike Adams, the health ranger of naturalnews.com, and I recently published a list of 20 dark predictions for 2013, 2014, and 2015. I'm going to go through those predictions for you here on InfoWars Nightly News one by one and give you some more details about each one. But first, let me just say, you know, I'm on the record with Alex Jones saying that nothing would happen on the Mayan calendar day of 2012. So I'm not a kind of person who just goes and, and follows every doomsday prophecy or every negative prediction. Long term, I'm an optimist. But if you do the math on what's been happening in 2011 and 2012 and with the entire Obama administration, the TSA and so on, even going back to the Bush administration and the Patriot Act, if you project that into 2013, 2014 and 2015, it looks very bad, very scary times for liberty and for America. So I'm going to go through those predictions right now and give you more details. Prediction number one, the global debt collapse arrives. And by the way, these predictions, the time frame is three years. So 2013, 2014, and 2015. Some of them may happen in 2013, but some may take another year or two. I do agree with people like Max Kaiser, who says that a global debt collapse is on the horizon. Whether it happens by April 2013, I'm not sure, but I do know that the debt, the global debt pyramid cannot continue. So the next point is number two, Obama administration attempts to gut the Second Amendment. Now that's not a difficult prediction to make for those of us who have been in the loop on all this, but for the mainstream people out there, they're kind of shocked to hear that. 
they think Obama loves the Constitution, loves the Bill of Rights, and loves you. Hey, he even loves all those children that he's bombing in Syria and Libya and Egypt and maybe soon Iran as well, because it's all about love when you're a Nobel Peace Prize winning global war criminal, isn't it? In any case, the Second Amendment is going to be gutted, or at least an attempt will be made on gutting the Second Amendment. Point number three, martial law will be declared in America. This is a big one. I believe this will happen again sometime in the next three years, and it will be instigated by an event such as a global debt collapse or a false flag attack being instigated by the government itself that can then be blamed on patriots or veterans or gun owners. And we'll talk about that prediction later. That's a separate prediction. But martial law will be declared, and that will be the basis from which Obama, the constitutional scholar, if you believe that, will say that he has the right to then demand nationwide gun confiscation and control of the food supply and much more. All right, next point, prediction number four. Expect extreme shortages of guns, ammo, magazines, and all gun accessories. Now, this has already begun, but it's going to get much worse because if Dianne Feinstein has her way, obviously she's going to try to completely outlaw virtually all guns in the hands of private citizens. You can expect then, consider this to be prohibition on guns. Just like prohibition on marijuana or prohibition on alcohol, it's going to create a huge black market where guns will still be bought and sold and ammo and magazines and many other things but everybody will be criminalized in the process. So just as today our prisons are filled with people who smoked a joint, got caught with a little bit of pot, but otherwise are you know, happy working citizens and no threat to society, in the future the prisons could be filled with people who got caught selling 50 rounds of ammo to a neighbor who tattled on them to the federal government. So expect some of that to start happening in the next few years. Next point is number five, tactical weapon strikes target Iran. I do believe that in the next probably one year, we will see a strike on Iran using U.S. technology. Now, obviously, Israel will, will likely be involved in this strike, and it may be an Israel-U.S. team that engages in these strikes, but Iran is in the crosshairs, and they want to have an excuse to go after Iran, so expect to see more of the so-called weapons of mass destruction discussion that we saw before the invasion of, of uh, Iraq in the Gulf War and uh, in Afghanistan. So, so watch for those kinds of signs. That lets you know that they're about to strike Iran, which will, of course, skyrocket oil prices, skyrocket gold, and cause even more ripples to spread out in the world, the, the global realm of politics and military might. It's going to be bad for all of humanity if that war breaks out in the Middle East. The next point, number six, a massive false flag attack will be carried out in the USA and blamed on patriots. This could be on the small side, something like a school shooting, another stage shooting, just like Aurora, Colorado, or possibly even Newtown, Connecticut. Or it could be something more medium sized, like an Oklahoma City bombing, like we saw with the federal building. You can expect uh, police stations or government buildings to be bombed and blamed on patriots. Or on the large side, this could be a radiological attack, a dirty bomb, for example, set off in a major U.S. city, planned by the government, carried out by the government, blamed on a patsy who is a gun owner, a veteran, a patriot, you know, you name it. They're going to throw all those labels in there. This could hit a major U.S. city such as Chicago or Los Angeles or New York or, hey, even someplace like Houston, Texas, for example. And it will be, the media will jump on board and blame gun owners, and that will be the, if it happens, that will be the excuse for martial law across America. Number seven, DHS arms the TSA and begins insane abuses of Americans on roadway checkpoints. You can expect, see, the, the, the building of the TSA has been the creation of an army of evil, an army of people who have no ethics, no law enforcement training whatsoever, who have never sworn an oath to the Constitution. The DHS can't wait to continue to grow that army, kind of like an army of pedophiles and thieves. Imagine a bunch of pedos running down the street with guns pointed at your head and running roadside checkpoints. That's what we're going to get with the TSA. So you can expect Americans to start being pulled over at TSA roadside checkpoints and raped by the TSA. 
your children will be molested by the TSA if this prediction comes true, if this is ruled out. They will steal anything of value in your pockets. They especially love to go in your pockets, but they could steal things out of your cars or trucks or motor homes. They will steal your loot just like they do at the airport, and they will rape your wives and daughters and children at the same time. That will be rolled out across America, and it is one of the main signs of the coming police state. It's already here. They're just going to make it worse. All right, next prediction is number eight, the rise of the resistance. You can expect that the worse these abuses of rights and liberties get in America, the stronger the resistance will become. And this resistance can take many forms. Right now, there is already an online resistance, which is InfoWars, for example. But there, there could be, if this gets bad enough, a physical resistance where people actually take up arms, uh, ha have teams, and actually commit sabotage acts against the government or try to even, for example, kill TSA agents by using sniper rifles or other means, uh, explosives, things like that. This is really the beginning of an all-out war in America, a kind of civil war, if it happens. Now, again, just to, just to reiterate, I hope none of these things happen, but this is sadly where I think it's headed because the government has abandoned the Bill of Rights, abandoned the Constitution, abandoned liberty, and is trying to literally round up and exterminate all those who believe in liberty. Now, the next, the next uh, prediction here, number nine, attacks on the First Amendment accelerate as government seizes websites. I am predicting that the government will sooner or later begin to shut down and seize websites like naturalnews.com, my site, and infowars.com and others. Uh, we are working on a technology right now, a peer-to-peer -peer technology that can bypass that and, and still maintain what I call an information underground railroad so that all of you will be able to stay in touch with us using a non-centralized distributed content peer-to-peer -peer encrypted system. We're building that right now with the help of many, many volunteers, and uh, I'll keep you posted on that. I'm sure InfoWars will be announcing that when it is available sometime in 2013. That's my number one priority because we know the censorship is coming. Facebook recently, as you know, censored our Gandhi quote and shut down dozens of websites that were pro-Second Amendment and pro-gun rights. It's just the beginning, folks. It's going to get much worse throughout 2013, 2014, 2015. All right, the next prediction is number 10. The rise of violent rhetoric among the population as disagreements turn to threats. We've already seen many liberals, so-called liberals, saying that they really want to kill conservatives. They want to kill the NRA president, for example. They want to kill people who own guns. They're all about extermination. That's what they believe in. They are Adolf Hitler wannabe people. They love the idea of mass murder of anybody who doesn't believe in worshiping big government. But this, their rhetoric continues to become more aggressive. And at the same time, the conservatives are becoming more aggressive in saying, we're not going to put up with this. You know, we, we may actually take up arms, as some of the comments that I'm hearing across the Internet, even posted on Facebook and Twitter and elsewhere. So you can expect that this could result in isolated conflict, even, even shootouts or acts of violence among these people throughout the next three years. Again, I don't want to see that coming, but it could happen. All right, the next prediction is number 11. The global government makes its move. You can expect that the worst things get in the United States, especially if there is martial law declared, and if there are any outbreaks of violence, you can expect the UN to then launch a so-called peacekeeping mission into uh, invading the United States. We could see United Nations troops with their blue helmets occupying American cities and calling it peace. <laughs> you know, Steve Quayle was right about this. He's been predicting this for a long time, the Russian troops stationed in the U.S., for example. And he says there's, there are a lot of troops stationed here. For a long time, I didn't believe that. But now I think he may be actually correct. Uh, even if they're not stationed here, they could be flown in. There could be an invasion force from the United Nations that comes into the U.S. and begins occupying America with its peace. And of course, hey, they will also drop peace bombs on U.S. cities or rebel installations, and they can also shoot you with peace bullets. That's what they bought recently, the 1.6 billion rounds of peace bullets. Not only do they stand for peace, but they will, of course, leave you in pieces if you stand in the way of them. 
But that's what the liberals want, to destroy any resistance and take over America under a new communist regime, possibly led by Obama. All right, next prediction. Number 12, accelerated mainstream media attacks on patriots, preppers, and veterans. You can expect veterans to continue to be demonized, as well as all gun owners who will be labeled terrorists. This isn't a difficult prediction, but you'll see it accelerated even in movies as well. Expect attacks on men. Anybody who is macho will be attacked. Anybody who believes in standing up for the Bill of Rights will be attacked. And again, possibly labeled terrorists, possibly rounded up and thrown into FEMA camps. Number 13, the disagreement with the government will be characterized as a mental disorder. We're going to see the, the very aggressive application of psychiatry in classifying critical thinking people as having mental disorders. This is straight out in 1984 and, and some other dystopian sci-fi novels as well. They will medicate you if you can think for yourself. The, the point of the medication will be to make you conform, to shut down your critical thinking skills, which is partially what fluoride already does, and make sure that you can't even think a thought that is against the government. So just being born as an intelligent human being is going to be considered a crime against the system, and you will be treated with psychiatric drugs and thrown in the gulag until you repent and admit that Obama is your savior. Mm, just like Jamie Foxx says right before he says, let's kill all the white people. Isn't that great? Next prediction, number 14. Continued rise in unemployment, food stamps, and welfare as Obama accelerates the deliberate destruction of the U.S. economy. The step-by-step -step gutting of the economy is continuing, in fact, accelerating, so you can expect Obama to continue his plan to destroy America and make everyone a government slave and a government servant. That's also great for the re-election of people who hand out things to, to uh, their voters. So the voters will only... Once they're past the majority, which I think we're already there, they will only vote for the candidate that offers them the most handouts. Free Obama phones or whoever the next candidate is. Free phones, free food stamps, free food, free you know, so-called health care, even though it's really just disease care. That's the name of the game. That's who's going to win future elections. Next prediction. Number 15, the criminalization of preparedness activities as the government outlaws ammo storage and other things. So if you are, quote, hoarding ammo, which will probably mean owning anything over 500 rounds of any caliber, you could be criminalized, thrown in jail, and have all your ammo confiscated. This is coming. Uh, you can also be arrested, I think, in the near future for hoarding, quote, hoarding food or owning any kind of supply in large quantities. The idea is to paint preppers and survivalists as terrorists or wackos and then to make sure that the American people live in a system of day-to-day -day dependence on government deliveries of food, medicine, water, and, of course, quote, protection under, you know, government-organized uh, local police who are going to be increasingly the TSA reaching down your pants. The, the, the point is they don't want you to be prepared. They don't want you to be self-sustaining. They don't want you to be able to survive anything that's coming. All right, next Next uh, prediction, number 16, riots in the streets followed by martial law. I mentioned this earlier, but it's a separate prediction that at some point, probably following the financial collapse, we will see riots in the streets across uh, the, the American cities, not in the countryside, obviously, and not in every city, but in major U.S. cities. This will be most likely uh, government will have agents in these riots who will be instigators, and their job is to throw Molotov cocktails at targets or even start shooting firearms in order to give the government the justification to shut down all protests and all riots. That's how it, it will play out. And then they will use that, if someone gets killed in one of those riots, they will use that as the justification to declare martial law, which I mentioned earlier. All right, next prediction. Number 17, deliberate food shortages used as a weapon of government control. Food will be a weapon. And once martial law is declared, the government will probably put in place price controls on foods. That will cause immediate food shortages across grocery stores all across the country. This will then result in a reactionary alarmist seizing of the food distribution hubs by the Obama administration under the declaration of martial law. Once the government owns the food distribution hubs or controls them, it will then selectively deliver food to areas that are 
agreeing to go along with Obama and to go along with martial law, food will then be denied to the geographic areas that have a large contingent of rebels, let's say, rebellion members who are not going along with the program. So you can expect states like Texas, for example, which is going to be very resistant to Obama martial law or an Obama police state. Texas may resist this, and Obama will probably use his power under martial law to deny food deliveries to the state of Texas. Remember, Texas has already been threatened with um, an economic embargo when they when when the state legislature threatened to criminalize the TSA's molestation of air travelers at Texas airports. So there's already a precedent for this happening. All right, next prediction, number 18. Weather becomes even more radicalized with droughts, floods, and freezes. The, the only thing that... The only reason this is important is because this will further cause disruptions in the food supply. So this is a good time to shore up your storable foods and make sure you're ready to make it through any kind of food disruptions. Uh, the weather can get crazy in 2013 and beyond. So and we already had a lot of droughts and freezes and floods in, in 2012. That's going to cause food inflation in 2013. That's already, you know, coming our way. That's un, unescapable, inescapable. But beyond that, it's going to get even worse because weather patterns could get crazy. And related to that is the next prediction, number 19, the solar weather gets nasty. Solar flares threaten communications and more, actually. A medium-sized solar flare will, of course, threaten satellites that are in orbit, communication satellites, and lots of broadcasts, and even emergency services such as 911 response services. But if a sufficiently large solar flare strikes the Earth, which only happens about once every century or so, it could actually cause a total grid down scenario, complete grid failure, potentially followed by meltdowns of hundreds of nuclear power plants that can no longer fuel their backup generators or even run their cooling pumps. That's a total nightmare scenario. I'm not predicting that scenario for 2013. There's only about a 1% chance of that happening in any given year. But in a lifetime, that's a very real risk, and that's something that we need to be thinking about because we've never been hit by a large solar flare during modern civilization. The last time one hit was in, I think, the mid-1800s when there wasn't much technology around and people didn't depend on technology. If we get hit now, it's going to be bad, bad news. I mean, worst case, Mad Max scenario, go out and read those books by James Wesley Rawls because you're going to need all those skills. All right, last prediction, number 20. You will be told, no matter what happens, that the answer to all these problems is more government. That's right. If anything goes wrong, anything that I just mentioned above, all these predictions, food shortage, uh, riots, um, financial failure, whatever the case is, you will be told that the only reason those problems happen is because government isn't big enough yet. If we could just give government more power, more control, more money, then, and give it more of the economy, in fact, like a centralized command, control, top-down, communistic economy, then all the problems will be solved. That's what we're being told. And of course, that's nonsense. The, the answer to all of this is actually to make government much smaller, to have a, a free market, to have more liberty, more individual power, power distributed across a true republic instead of centralized in the hands of a few globalist criminals who, who are trying to dominate our lives. So those are the 20 predictions. Again, I, long term, I'm an optimist. I, I hope none of these happen. But doing the math, folks, this is what it looks like we're going to be facing in the very near future. Get ready. I hope you have stored ammunition, firearms, food, medicine, communications gear, water filtration devices, everything. I know you can find a lot of that at the InfoWars store, so please support InfoWars by getting those items there as you can. But uh, other items you're going to have to get elsewhere, such as firearms and ammo, so get on it. You better be prepared for what's coming. It's going to be a dark year ahead. I hope we can have an optimistic recovery and a restoration of the Republic on the other side of all this, but there's a dark storm coming, so get ready for it. That's my report, Mike Adams of naturalnews.com for InfoWars Nightly News.